Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason, and this is a hypnosis session. So, I made a video a couple of days ago asking you, my subscribers, what um, you think that I should do next, what you would like for me to do next, as far as uh, videos go. And I played around with the idea of safety. Um, maybe a stop smoking course. Uh, ideas that came up in the responses were things like agoraphobia or ag agoraphobia I think it's pronounced in uh, in America in the England we call it agoraphobia uh, just like you aluminium aluminium and we call it aluminium you call it aluminium aluminium yeah anyway we could be all day going through the different pronunciations but I've been giving it thought um, what I could do what I should do I'm trying to move away from should because it's an option it's obviously my choice but at the same time I want to do something that's useful to you watching so I've decided to go along with the safety aspect of things the thing is recently especially everything I do has safety embedded within it everything I do if you watch any of the videos recently that I've done the word safety generally comes up within the video within the mp3 if you're listening on iTunes or SoundCloud so the idea of doing a session specifically on safety I look back at my back cat my back catalogue of videos that I've got already on YouTube and I've done a few videos on safety one is feel safety in nature mother's arms that's one of the videos that I did a while back about, um, about half an hour long I did uh, a video about abuse how to feel safe you know moving forward from having been through that kind of situation I've done uh, videos on bullying um, so I've had quite a few videos it's probably maybe six or seven videos maybe more with the word safety or safe in the title so i'm just kind of thinking how do i approach this uh series of videos you know so what i'm thinking of doing is producing a weekly session on a sunday and it's going to be aimed at safety so it won't be every day I'm not able to produce a session every day at the moment due to just circumstances at the moment but uh, and if I do produce video sessions on a daily basis I'll have to be recording them beforehand I can't I can't always um, make videos on a daily basis uh, just to because of how I'm feeling at the moment so I've been a bit unwell the last couple of days well since Friday um, I've started to perk up this <laughs> this afternoon um, thankfully but uh, yeah I've been very very under the weather and down due to various things I think it was a, a culmination of having that interview thing that I had to go to last week I think I mentioned it in my vlog that I did 
and um, just a few general things in you know, life, just, you know, trying to get stuff sorted out. And I felt a bit sad when I got to the end of the sessions. So I kind of brought everything to an end. The weekly insomnia sessions, the weekly chronic pain, and the daily relaxation. And I brought everything to an end kind of at the same time. And then I felt a bit empty. And um, the thing is, for me, it's really, I really want to make, make sessions to help as many people as possible and I'm not going to do that if I don't actually make the sessions um, but at the same time I just get a little bit frustrated that there's so many that I've done that aren't being watched there's some pretty good sessions out there I would say uh, that I've put a lot of energy and really felt good about them when I first recorded them and released them and they're just lying dormant on YouTube and then maybe got 12 views when when I originally released them they had maybe thousands of views it's uh, I know it's a bit frustrating but it's okay I just uh, I'd like to, I kind of feel like I should just delete the ones from the past and just re-upload them every day re-upload a new one just delete it and re-upload it but then I don't know it just feels would that be the right thing to do I don't know maybe then I'll be able to reach a, a bigger audience with the stuff I've got but it might be a bit weird you watching a video and then tomorrow you watch a video and I'm <laughs> I look six years younger you know uh, or nine years younger so that might be a bit of a strange one. You had a beard yesterday. Now you don't have a beard. And now you do have a beard again today. But yesterday you had no hair. But now you've got hair. And a full beard. What? It's, it could be confusing if people think I'm uploading them on a daily basis. You know, like live, kind of. Um, so, where do we go with this? I've been thinking about how I would like to feel, how, you know, what kind of session I would like to listen to as far as safety goes. And to be able to do a session, I suppose, realistically, ideally, I'd like it to be specific for me. I can't offer that because we all have different lives and different pasts and different presents and different futures obviously so we all have different needs but at the same time I would say we all have the same need which is to feel safe and I was given this I've given this a lot of thought over the years anyway but especially the last couple of days and I've just been thinking you know in some ways there's nothing more important than feeling safe I mean you could say well our health of course uh, to be in good health but if you're in good health and you don't feel safe then you're not appreciating the good health you're not appreciating uh, you know the benefits of that because some people might say well I'd rather have lots of money if you got lots of money and you don't feel safe how can you really enjoy that money you may think well I want my children to be healthy and I want to have children have a family that's more important than safety. That your children need to feel safe. And what's more important to you than your children feeling safe? To you, you know? Plus you need to feel safe and 
they're more likely to feel safe if you feel safe because you share that energy you pass that on um, children just pick up everything so you can you can try and hide your feelings but they pick up on it you know I think that's kind of the the first way that we communicate when we're first born you know we didn't have weren't able to verbally communicate so we had to rely on emotions and trying to figure out what the parent is going through what kind of emotions based on the noises and the facial expressions and the movements and even the sounds of the body you kind of try to get in touch with the emotions of that person whether it's the baby to the adult or the adult to the baby trying to figure out if your child is okay if the child is happy and you can get a sense of that without verbal communication and safety is it's kind of at the top of the list and that somehow surprised me because I've always sort of thought well love is got to be number one but what is love without safety you know if you you could love someone but if you know if you were in a part of the country you lived in you know let's say Israel and you fell in love with someone from Palestine you know that might be the, the loveliest feeling in the world but you chances you won't be safe it's not a safe place to have love for someone who lives in Palestine or lives in Israel you know and that same happens in various different places around the world sometimes it can be as, as silly as uh, someone in a different town or someone who supports a different football team um, so love in a sense isn't as important as safety because without safety what have you got you don't have the and also it's not just about safety it's about feeling safe and that's where things like phobias come in that's where things you know like agoraphobia I'm sorry I can't call it agoraphobia I'm so used to call it agoraphobia so please forgive me and you know what I'm talking about anyway so agoraphobia the fear of I don't know what the exact terminology is for the fear of but it's basically a fear of going out a fear of outside spaces a fear of crowded places maybe a bit it's i guess there's levels there's always levels of everything and i know that people who have uh certain conditions don't always appreciate them being described as having levels of it but there are levels like with ocd some people it completely ru ruins ruins rules and ruins their life in a sense to the point where everything about their life is kind of ingrained in the uh the rituals or the feelings of anxiety can only be released when they do a certain thing um and i've, I've seen a few people as a therapist with ocd and i've you know read up on it a bit and of course if you watch a tv show they always show the most extreme cases they never show you someone that um can only get into the car when they have at least three bottles of water and there's you know certain things in the car need to be in place before they would ever travel but the rest of you know maybe the rest of the their life they're fine they're okay in other situations 
just when they travel or maybe on a train they can't travel um, going backwards but not just to the point of uh, being mildly you know agitated but to actually to feel physically sick and the only way they can change it is to face the other way you know I mean I guess there's different there's different phobic terms for all these different things I guess but there are levels we just only really hear about the extreme levels just like there are levels of agoraphobia so not everybody with um, agoraphobia it can never leave the house some people do manage to leave the house and you know they may struggle it may be absolutely horrible for them but some people can leave the house and attend doctor's appointments and you know and then other people will never they wouldn't leave the house for anything so again levels it's not about the person one person being stronger than the other it's about levels it's about levels of stress and anxiety that's caused by the idea of doing something which in the past has caused stress and anxiety you know if uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just get rid of all that stuff if we could just get rid of that fear because I was talking earlier about safety so there's one thing having safety that person with agoraphobia with agoraphobia let's say they're in their home and good chances they are safe they walk into the garden good chances they're safe to do that the thing is they don't feel safe and some people feel safe in their home and can be agoraphobic because they won't go out other people can feel unsafe still when they're in their home and they can only feel safe when they're in the living room or in the bedroom or they can only feel safe when their husband or wife is there or their cat or maybe they can only feel safe you know when the television's on or it could be various various different things we're all different and The human mind is pretty amazing really when you think about it being able to create these states of mind that basically are of no use often but the same state of mind would be really useful you know, if you had a phobia of uh, going near a fire, you know, putting your hand into a fire, that's a good phobia to have, that's a good fear to have. And whenever you thought about putting your hand into the fire, your anxiety level got higher and higher the closer you got to it, so that you pulled your hand away and you felt relaxed again. That's That's like working in your favor that's a good way to use this we try you know don't we try to instill this into children to be fearful of things that may harm them i guess sometimes we may go overboard with it sometimes we may not um stress it enough you know but I remember my, I don't remember my mom, my mom being particularly uh, interested in my safety, but my nan, she, she used to say the word Bernie. It's seriously, it's like, I think she thought I was a cat or a dog, but so if I went anywhere near the fire, she'd say Bernie, Bernie. Or well, she'd also do it with my little brother when he was first born. So when he was like toddling around, Bernie um, 
I was I, I was nineteen. It was it was embarrassing, but yeah, she she did it. She just it's just what she did, and she had this safety, wanting to be wanting me to be safe, wanting me to feel safe. Um, even when I was in my twenties, uh, possibly even thirties, we'd cross the road, and she'd hold my hand. But not for, not to hold my not f for herself, but for me, so that I was safe crossing the road. And then she'd run; <laughs> she'd try and run across really quickly. So basically, she was not very safe on the roads. But she wanted me to feel safe. So you know, it's about not just about being safe; it's about feeling safe. In the same way, you can be loved, but if you don't feel loved, it's not going to have the same effect on you, necessarily. You know, the amount of people that perhaps don't realise just how loved they are, how important they are to other people in their life. And they never hear, get to hear the, the wonderful things that are said at their funeral. Never get to, to maybe find out just how much regard and kindness people have towards them. That's a shame. I think that's a shame. Because I'd say most people have had... A big effect on others. It might be one person that you've really had a, a, a really positive influence, like life changing, I mean. And they may never tell you, they may not even recognize it. You know, they might even, uh, they may not have a great memory. Memory, you might have bought them lots of food, you might have help pay their rent and all, you know all kinds of stuff and done that for a year and then a year later they're saying i always i don't know how i get for a buy okay i always seem to have managed to get by even when i've got no money but they've forgotten they've forgotten that you've helped them so even people that don't acknowledge it or don't even remember it doesn't change the fact that you've helped them. So maybe there's benefit in us each individually remembering those things that we've done to help others. Uh, I know it sounds a bit egotistical maybe, a bit self-congratulatory. I like that word, self-congratulatory. But in a way reminding ourselves of the positive useful loving actions that we have uh, done you know to help others surely that can only be a beneficial compare that to a life of just remembering the crappy things and the negative stuff and the harmful things and you know how could that be useful we could all put together a montage you know like get a scrapbook or a big board on a wall and we could all put pictures of a, a scenario and from our memory and then just put a title and maybe a little bit of a story behind it what happened and we could all either have a really negative board or a really positive board or you know a, a mixture but ultimately it would be up to us because it's our memory of what's happened but we all have the ability to have a board which or a scrapbook of memories which makes us look amazing which makes us look like a wonderful person that you are. 
it'd be an interesting thing to do. I think, um, I'm sure I did, saw something like that in one of the self-help books that I read years ago about um, putting together, you know, the, the major things in your life and just the, the things, the most positive things, you know, just positive things, not none of the negativity. Um, because neg negativity for some reason seems to be easier to get hold of. Um, and I guess a lot of that is due to, I don't know about you, but the way where I live, television, the, the media is very negative and they do focus on the worst case scenarios. They work, focus on, you know, the most extreme things that happen in society. Um, really do I see a news story about someone with bipolar that has um, saved a child's life, you know, or started a charity helping people with the homeless or um, has become, you know, just has succeeded in something or accomplished something amazing. The only news stories I hear about people with bipolar or other mental illnesses is when something horrendous has happened. It'd be nice to change that. I'd, I'd love to see some more optimistic, like, you know, kind stories, but genuine stories. I don't want them to make stuff up, but it'd be nice to have more of an even portrayal of the world an even portrayal of humanity because how are we supposed to feel safe see i got back to safety how are we to have that safety feeling when the television is constantly telling us that we're not safe and even if it's not saying it directly it's just showing images continuously of horrible things violence and all those horrible things that happen but it doesn't even it out by showing us all the wonderful things that happen you know it's uh all the miracles all the people's lives that are saved from paramedics and surgeons and uh you know doesn't doesn't tell us about all the great breakthroughs. I mean, they do sometimes have nice stories, but it'd be nice if it was a bit more even. But hey, I sometimes think that with people as they grow up and maybe watching the television, watching documentaries and seeing themselves as supposed to be acting like that. You know, maybe not seeing another way because they're not being, they're not, it's like that's not even an option for them in their minds because they're not shown that option. I mean, that's one of the good things. I think I'm not really, I guess it's pretty safe to say I'm, I'm not pro war at all. Um, and I'm not on here to talk about war or anything like that, but the most positive adverts I think I ever see is the adverts for the Navy, the Air Force and the Army. They're the most positive adverts telling, aimed at young people generally, telling them that they can be whatever they want to be. That they can, if they work hard, they can train and they can travel the world and they can open their minds up to, you know, they can basically achieve whatever they set out to achieve. 
I just think, isn't it a shame that that's the only avenue that a young person is going to get told that? You know, wouldn't it be nice if there was other avenues or other places they were told that? You know, come, you can do anything you want to do. You can, you can be successful. You know, if other companies or the government or schools or universities really, you know, right from an early age told young people that you can, you really can feel safe. I'm trying to get this safe word in to get myself back to safety. The thing is, a lot of the reasons why people don't feel so safe is because some of the young population who aren't told that they can achieve and aren't don't feel um, loved, cared for, respected may go off the rails because of that. Instead of actually being told that you're worthwhile, you know, you have so many opportunities here and, you know, we will do everything we can to help you to achieve what you set out to achieve. You get all the support you, you need. Which means there'd be less um, of the horrible stuff going on. Oh, well. Therefore, there'd be more sense of safety for people walking in the streets, more sense of safety for people in restaurants or in shops or wherever. I just kind of maybe it's a idealistic way to think, but. I just feel that everybody, whether you're five years old or 90, man, woman, child, you should be safe wherever you are at all times. You should be able to walk down the street at three o'clock in, in the morning. You know, and be safe. And I realize it's a uh, probably too much wishful thinking there that that would be possible but especially when we encourage people to drink alcohol <laughs> which is kind of funny in itself really we encourage binge drinking in my country so that sense of safety right from the beginning is taught to us that we're not safe when we're first born, we're safe, but then don't do that. Don't do that because it's not safe and always, you know. So very early on, there's that sense of safety or that sense of danger is kind of pushed to us, introduced to us. And then as we get older, we can see for ourselves that we're not safe or that we feel we're not safe all the time. So much of that lack of feeling safe isn't based on reality, though, because generally we are safe. So it's the problems of only really arises when you don't feel safe, when you, I don't use the word illogically, but and there's no good reason really for you not to feel completely at ease and calm within your own body and mind and to be able to just let go you know let go of any preconceived ideas about how perhaps you feel you should behave or feel But just let it go. Let yourself just be in the moment. 
so that actually you can enjoy that moment. That's one of the things I quite liked when I did martial arts is at the very least being able to defend myself on a very basic level. You know, to be able to block a punch or to, you know, hopefully be able to reflexes, you know, to like Spider-Man. No, but, you know, to be able to just move and move to the side so they kind of get off balance and, you know, stuff like that. Not to be some kind of fighting expert, but just it's nice to have something that you can fall back on if needed in the same way that you know if you have experience in uh, I guess if you've been in the forces the army whatever then if you ever are stranded in a forest somewhere you've got the resources to survive you know, you'd be able to know kind of what you can eat, maybe, and you'd be able to know how to start a fire and how to keep warm. You know, basic um, self-preservation things, which uh, I personally wouldn't really know much about. But isn't there something inside all of us? A sense of safety that we all have available. That is there. Like so many other feelings that are available that we may not be aware of in that moment, but it is there. That sense of fearlessness bravery you know this that maybe isn't there all the time but kicks in sometimes you know in a certain moment you feel differently you feel uh, unafraid you don't feel uh, how you perhaps would expect yourself to feel or act and I heard that many people that um, have to deal with illness deal with it so much better than they do with like having their car stolen or having a you know just uh, lose some other thing which is nothing in comparison to having to deal with this but when it comes to the big things quite often something kicks in where we're able to um focus and cope with whatever comes our way to be able to deal with the situation and get things into context and to be able to give ourselves that love that kindness that is required in that time which can only help with the healing. So in the same way, I kind of feel that we've got that sense of safety within us. And I'm pointing to my chest, but that's where I feel it kind of comes from with me. But I feel quite tingly, not, not in a weird way, but quite um, in my shoulders as well, in my head, just because I know that that part, which is feeling safe, is a really big part and it's really powerful. And when you consider, and I'll just bash the microphone, sorry, when you consider that the mind is constantly keeping you safe keeping your body safe the skin you know if you touch something hot 
you move away from it. You don't think to move away from it. You just automatically move away. Your reflex moves away from that heat to protect your hand or whatever part of the body is hit the heat. In the same way as if you're on a, a cliff's edge and you're about to fall and you, you pull yourself back. But it's not done by you consciously. You just unconsciously step back and, you know, get your yourself back into kind of balance. But there's no logic behind it and there's no consciousness behind it. It just happens naturally. You know, the few times in the past I've gone, not so much now, I'm much more careful, but gone to walk in the road and I've managed to step back just in time and a lorry's gone past or a car's been speeding and just, you know, just missed me. But I wasn't consciously aware of that. It looked like my whole body, my legs just moved backwards and there was you know, literally inches away from the car. So my safety was there. I do wonder whether or not the person in the car felt too safe. I clearly didn't have any sense of danger towards other people. I guess some people get off on danger, don't they, for themselves. Why well, people jump out of planes and ski down mountains and I guess some of that could be to do with the adrenaline rush of danger but I've never really found my adrenaline to be much of a much of an enjoyable experience really yeah. it's uh it's useful at times but I don't think it's something to, something to be messed around with I think something it's hugely useful in the event of needing it in the event of if there's an accident blocking off you know the pain receptors so that you don't have the same uh, pain level that you would you know maybe a few hours later once you've uh, had treatment so yeah it's uh, that unconscious safety mechanism I feel is there all the time it's it's big when you think that we're healing continuously our bodies heal itself our skin you've only got to just cut your finger by accident of course and you can watch it over a few days just heal and turn into just nothing or if it's a you know a deeper cut it takes a while to heal maybe but heal it does it always heals it's kind of magical really the skin the same as the internal organs continuously healing so our mind our unconscious mind let's call it that if you like is constantly looking after us constantly keeping us safe so from that angle we have a real reason to feel safe because we are safe in the same way when we're asleep you can trust your unconscious mind to wake you up if you're needed You know, it's always looking out for you. Not in a uh, scared way or uptight way or anxious way. Just in a calm, matter-of-fact way. And it's been doing it since you were born. You know, if you're asleep and you and for whatever, whatever reason you stop breathing, your body readjusts itself so you can breathe again.
or it wakes you up so you can adjust your body so you can breathe again easily and safely so from that angle we actually have a reason to feel safe because we are safe aren't we most of the time if not all the time and if you are safe then why not just feel safe because all you're doing is just feeling what is real there's no contradiction between reality and how you feel then so it's kind of aligning reality and how you feel to be in agreement with each other to be kind of coming from the same place maybe even connected so reality and how you feel about reality connected together And feeling safe is nice, isn't it? There's so much attached to it. So, you know, there's the feeling of pleasure connected to feeling safe. A feeling of positivity connected to feeling safe. A feeling of optimism. Because negativity has no place in it. It can't be connected to feeling safe. Negativity doesn't fit together. That's not reality. Negativity is just a response. It's an emotion. It's a feeling. So if you are safe, then the only way to feel is safe. Of course, there's other stuff going on, other feelings and emotions. We're not just, you know, just one one emotion, are we? So if you are safe, you can feel safe. And you don't need an excuse to do that. You're just accepting what is. You're just observing the reality and then docking you know like a like a space shuttle or whatever docking to get into the you know the space station or whatever happens in space you're just connecting together like two bits of lego one is the reality that you are safe and the other one is the feeling that you're feeling safe. You can have the fact that you are safe without the feeling. That goes without saying. Because so many times that we are safe. You know just in life. Where. Perhaps we don't even acknowledge it. But the feeling of feeling safe that's a choice that's about letting yourself feel and be in contact with your reality
And the more time you spend feeling safe, the more your mind will become adjusted to it. The more you become finely tuned into not just the feeling, but the circumstances around the feeling. The places you are when you have this feeling. The things that you are doing when you have this feeling of safety. And the more times you feel safe in the past, you know, any time up till now, the more times you felt safe, the more times you will feel safe. Because you're just giving yourself proof continuously evidence so this is evidence based this is you know what psychiatrists and psychologists and all these professionals they want evidence based so you can collect this evidence yourself by feeling and being connected the two so when you are safe you feel safe and the more that happens the more you notice in it happens and the more you notice it happens you start to make these triggers like a little map of triggers around your life like going to the supermarket a trigger safe feel safe being at home safe feel safe leaving your house walking into the garden safe feel safe The feel safe is the important part when it comes to overcoming problems to do with safety. The reality of being safe is brilliant for your safety, obviously for your well-being. But if you ignore it, or if you don't acknowledge it, embrace it, love it, then you're not going to get the best out of life for yourself. So by having the fact of being safe and then feeling safe, connecting together, you can move forward. You can move into a different I don't know, like a different life even, you know, moving into a different direction. By connecting those two together, you can actually feel, possibly for the first time, that there's certain things that you can now do. There's certain situations that you, and blockages that maybe used to be there, that you can now overcome and move forward walk through those situations and those feelings that were once there because you can't have both the feelings you either feel safe or you don't you can't have both the logic is you are safe that's there that's the fact feeling safe connects to that and there's something about this, once you talk about it, once you realize it, once you really absorb these ideas into your brain, into your heart, into every cell of your being, something changes where actually it's impossible 
from now on to connect negative thoughts or negative ideas to being safe. It just won't let you connect it. So the idea perhaps in the past when you were safe and you thought you weren't, it, it won't go near it now. It won't allow it near it. And the only things that are allowed to connect to that reality of safety is the feeling of safety. That's the only thing that actually connects now. And it's quite a nice place to be, really, I imagine, in a sense of knowing that this is how it is now. It's changed. And the only real challenge now is to just think to yourself, how is this going to change your life? Think to yourself and wonder what things can you do differently now moving forward? How is this going to change the way you live your life? How is this going to change your future plans? knowing that you feel safe there's lots of benefits to this and it's kind of strange that it might seem that like um I'm just talking and you know that's it I'm just waffling on but actually there's a lot more to it than that that part of your mind has changed forever and it only takes a slight fine tuning a slight change to the mind to change your life completely in a positive, healthy, safe way. And that's what everything I do is about. It's about transformation, but safe transformation for you to move forward, to have a happier life to feel wonderful, to really appreciate yourself, really get in touch with just how amazing you are. You know, it's an opportunity for all of us to communicate as one one piece of energy of complete safety and we can share that feeling and pass it on to others because the more you share positive feelings whether it's love genuine feelings like love caring kindness feelings of safety when you share this that feeling becomes stronger within you those feelings can only grow and when they grow other feelings negativity all the harmful stuff, anger, panic, anxiety, all those things, they shrink down. Because there's not enough room 
in your mind, your body and your life. To have all of those feelings on a large scale. So the more confidence you feel, the more happiness, self-acceptance that you feel and experience, the less anger, the less feeling sorry for yourself, the less blaming other people and yourself, all that stuff just shrivels like a like an old prune whereas the positive feelings and emotions grow like a big tree and it keeps growing and it keeps growing and it gets stronger and stronger it's like the biggest tree in the world and it's individual to you And then you've got this old shriveled up bush or tree that's used to be big, used to be the one full of negativity, used to be the one that, you know, used to give you that energy of, you know, just nastiness and maybe you felt horrible inside and you're angry about other people, angry about yourself and bitterness and you know, just wanting revenge on people and, you know, didn't even understand the concept maybe of forgiveness. And that just starts to shrink. It just starts to just deflate into nothing. Because it can't compete with that joy that comes from love loving yourself, loving other people, acceptance, accepting other people, accepting yourself, safety, feeling safe, because you are safe. And having that confidence to change situations. So that you can have more safety and more love and more kindness in your life. To live the kind of life that you want to live. So this is the end of quite a long session actually I think, it's over an hour. I'll try and think of some catchy title to give it. This may not be a season, it might be a one off session, but I will be making more videos, more mp3s. Um, not sure when but maybe next Sunday maybe before see how I feel so thank you for all your support thank you for subscribing and leaving comments and liking the videos that you do and I really appreciate all that and uh, have a brilliant week and I hope that you liked this session and gained some benefit and can just learn to get more in touch with that safety that you naturally have and allow yourself to really feel it to really feel it really feel safe and remember to be kind to yourself so I'm going 
a brilliant week and I'll see you next time.